Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Warzone Breakdown. In today's gameplay, we're going to be covering some trios gameplay. And the purpose of this series is two reasons. One, to help you guys become better players and just acknowledge some simple mistakes that you guys may make on a day in and day out basis. And two, just have a little bit of fun watching how these players play because sometimes we see some really messed up shit. But here we are right off the bat, not wasting any time at all. Pretty promising. We already got our loadout drop with 142 players left. So we actually got our loadout drop in the first 30 seconds of the game. Unfortunately, I was too busy killing myself in the gulag. So I do not know how they actually achieved this goal. So far, movement. I mean, he seems like he's pretty cracked out. Granted, we haven't actually seen movement. We have Wapner going over here to try to contest the enemies. Now we have an entire squad to our right hand side in Superstore. He's going to go ahead and pick the easier fight and come over here to factory and take out these guys that are sitting on the buy station. Now, the moment the helicopter comes above us, the enemy should instantly be alerted. Now, they might be focused on the on the helicopter, which will allow us to come up behind the enemy and get some shots off. Unfortunately, unfortunately, he goes down. Oh my God. All right, so right off the bat, first thing I wanna talk about, his ADS sensitivity. I guarantee you, he's never changed it in his entire life. Is he rezzing under the ground, fam? God, I love Warzone. Um, first off, his ADS sensitivity. Notice when he aimed on the enemy and he tried to track him, he was just all over the place because it was too loose. Guys, whether you're on controller or mouse and keyboard, turn that shit down. It makes no damn sense. This is why a lot of players struggle in, in gunfights. <laughs> all right, but again, unfortunately, we did lose our teammate. He is in the gulag, so all we have to do is sit here and wait. And hopefully, Fratelli goes ahead and grabs this bounty so we can continue this momentum. I love the fact that we instantly have our loadout. We instantly came over here to get a fight one. And now we can actually move over to Superstore where there looks to be another team camping. Now we don't need to wait for our teammate. There is a buy station over here. We can actually go ahead and start pushing over there right now. If you want to wait for your squad member, that's fine. It's definitely nice to allow him to come back so you can protect him while he grabs his shit. But again, if you don't want to lose out on the kills, if you don't want the bounty to expire, I definitely would go ahead and push across. Right, for Tuzzy to go ahead and pick us up, and we're probably going to go ahead and land on the rooftop. And the reason why I say that is, it looks like these guys may be getting a wild hair up their ass to leave Superstore. Whoa! Skirt! We're going to come over here and test the team on the hill. Now, I like this play. I really do. I really do. We can go ahead and knock this team out, utilizing the information we have, and then go push the bounty because we still have two minutes for, before it expires. So, this is actually a really good play that I did not predict they were going to do. Not sure why, or not sure where we're going exactly right now. There were four enemies right here. We have another squad over here that we're shooting at right now. There's one more player all the way back on the bridge. Enemy pinged right there to your right-hand side. We need to go ahead. Oh, my gosh. This situation here, we're extremely thirsty for the execute. Not really a good decision at all. But fortunately, the enemy that we just killed did not have an angle on us to get the kill off. Now, let's talk about this fight with the helicopter. What we should have done initially was push the hill. All together, all three of us, right? We should have pushed the hill. The helicopter should have dropped us off and spaced us out, landed the chopper a little bit further away from the enemies, saving the chopper. And then we could have combated the enemies on the hill that we were on, as well as the ones across the street, as well as the ones to our left by the bridge, using the elevation to our advantage. Unfortunately, I'm not really sure what happened to Orange and why he bailed out and was way the hell away, but we ended up pushing those two teams, which could have been possibly a 2v8, by ourselves, which wasn't a good play. And you saw right there, one of the guys ended up dying and we had to bail out of that and get safe. But however, I do like the fact that instead of just going for the bounty and focusing on that, they decided to go ahead, utilize the information they had, knowing people were over there on the hill and try to fight them. So I respect them for that. But again, the planning was good. The execution was poor. I really would have liked to see them play a little bit more together and again, stick to the hill um, and then clear through the squads one at a time. It seemed like we just kind of got focused on two different things. We split our focus, we split our players, and unfortunately, we lost the man because of it. And the reason why it's a big deal, and y'all might think it's a big deal because he's got a gulag, but the reason why it is, is now we're just kind of sitting here stagnant. Again, we had a bounty marked. If we would have won that fight fast, we instantly could move over to the bounty, and we could be starting to engage with him, especially now that they're moving out to go to the buy station. But unfortunately, the bounty will probably be expired by the time we get there. Never mind, ladies and gentlemen, Wabner is going to go ahead and push this. He said, no, sir, I'm a 1v3, these assholes. So let's see, what, let's see if he pulls it off, man. His ADS sensitivity is extremely off, so I'm not that confident in his gunplay. 
Pop in dead silence way too early. Not a fan of that at all. You just pulled up in a vehicle, my dude. You just pulled up in a vehicle. Why would you pop dead silence? They know you're there. Guys, look. <laughs> Don't do that. That's pretty simple, right? Most players should think about that. As cracked out as his gameplay was acting, he really wasn't there 100%. <laughs> you know, my, my dude Wapner, he's got a lot to work on. ADS sensitivity for sure needs to be adjusted. I don't know how many times I gotta say it, but you guys need to start adjusting it. If your aim is just going everywhere and you can't track people, turn it the fuck down. All right, Um, first off, let's talk about how he pulls up to the building. He knows there's enemies there. He should have pulled the vehicle up to the building where he had cover instead of out in the open where he had a run to the building out in the open, right? Notice how the enemy peeked the left side of that building, was able to beam us because we had no cover. Pull up to the building, jump out, and use the building as cover. Stop jumping out in the middle of nowhere and running to the enemy with your hands in the air, waving like you just don't give a shit. Also, the dead silence. If you pull up to an enemy in a vehicle, don't pop deady unless you like separate yourself from that vehicle. The moment he pulled up, he popped his deady, right? Well, guess what? The enemies know where you're at. You just pulled up in a damn car. They heard it. They saw it. It's on the mini map. They, they know where you're at, fam. You're not fooling anybody. You're not. Save the deady for when you actually reposition, change your position, push in a building, something like that. You do not want to just instantly pop it when you hop out the vehicle because that little bit of time is wasted time off your dead silence. All right, here we are spectating Mal... 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 Kanov. What are you doing to me, Activision? What are you doing to me? All right, we have a live ping out from our squad mate. Here, another guy is coming up from behind. I've, again, another situation where his ADS sensitivity is a little too high. And I say a little, but it's a lot too high. He In that situation right there, whether his ADS sensitivity is correct or not, he should have just hit fire the enemy. That was a really simple fight to win. And then notice how he just breaks away to plate up. Why would you run a direction you haven't cleared yet to plate? If you need to plate up, run back up where you know it's safe because you were just sitting there. So unfortunately, he falls, and again, here we are spectating Wapner, who's coming right back to his shit. We have enemies floating above us right now. You can tell by the red dot and the arrow, but I wouldn't worry about him. We got an enemy at the silo. We got an enemy at the house to our right-hand side. We can catch him in the open right now, and we also have two teams at Storage Town. This guy should be an easy kill. Here we go. Unfortunately, we don't get the armor break. No! Bro! No, 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 never! That's an easy read right there. No, you have to have confidence in your gunplay. One, the grenade wasn't going to down him anyway, right? And two, when you're out in the open and you you put your gun away to heartbeat, to throw a grenade, you really, really, really are leaving yourself exposed. Fortunately, though, Fratelli's sitting here, so he should be able to get a nice cleanup on these guys running out in the open. They're actually being shot at by another squad to the north-hand side as well. We also had a heartbeat sensor, so there are players near us, so you don't want to stay too focused on the outside area. Oh, never mind. There he is. All right, we got to be careful sitting up here while we pop the reload. Hop down instantly because, again, with Superstore to the right-hand side and everything else, we're sitting on a ledge. We run a huge risk of dying. We have a gas mask also. I'd like to see us land the chopper and grab one of our squad mates back. Um, hopefully, Wapner, even though his settings are a little off, he he seems to be um somewhat competent, I should say. And again, he seems like a good player. He seems like he could be a good player, but making these simple mistakes is why his gameplay is being hindered. He should be sitting on about 10 kills right now, but unfortunately, he's sitting on five. We actually bought back Machiavelli. Mac. Makanov. Makanov. All right, going back to our dude for Telly. Going to go ahead and contest the enemy out in the open. And notice how the enemy, once again, was shooting us, not using the loadout drop as cover. Guys, if you're in a gunfight and you have a piece of cover next to you, you better use it. There's no reason to separate yourself from it. Granted, with Mr. M sitting right there, he probably would have shot him in the side anyway and killed him. That fight was basically unwinnable, but again, just make it habit of fighting near cover. I've been there. I'm not going to say shit. I've been there before. All right, vehicle below us. Now, we got to be careful. Circle rotates in five seconds, and we have a great distance to cross. Our helicopter's not looking too hot right now. So, if we end up losing this helicopter... We could be in a bad position when it comes to rotating because we have to rotate through hangars, through airport. And again, it's not the easiest spot to rotate through. Not really sure what we're doing right now. I think they're trying to find money to buy back their squad mate, which wouldn't be a bad idea. But honestly, if you just go kill the bounty, you can kill him, take their money, and then you can go to the buys. I don't like the fact that we're sitting here looting one building at a time. It's wasting way too much time. We're, we're playing the zone a little too close. And again... Everyone knows where we're at. So the moment we land the helicopter, that's just open ourselves up to opportunities to get shot in the face. 
All right, the enemies are in the hangars right now. You can see on the ping. Got to be careful when we're moving across. We've got two enemies so far. There he is sitting. Oh, I would not. I was about to say I would not contest the enemy with this gun. And then in this fight, I definitely would use the other gun. But what do I know? What do I know? In a long range fight, use your long range gun. In a close range fight, use a close range gun. He literally did the opposite. It worked out because those enemies missed their shots. But we missed a lot of shots too. Notice how much harder it is to shoot long range with an SMG. Granted, it's war zone. It's not that hard compared to using the one with the scope on it. And then flip flop. Notice how hard his tracking was when he was trying to use a scope to get some close range combat. But my dude for Telly's rocking 12 kills. He said, I don't need any help. We got window break to our right hand side. There may be an enemy there. Also, the helicopter just kind of sitting here. There we go. In and out. Let's get out. Let's get out. The helicopter being around us instantly lets enemies know what we're, where we're at, what our plan is. So if there were enemies camping that building that we heard the glass at, that could have been horrible timing. All right, here we have two enemies on the train. We have a vehicle below us as well. Let's see how they approach this. I really wouldn't scrap the helicopter, but I do like to see us putting some shots on the enemy. One of us can jump out, but I would not send both of them out. We also have an enemy behind us as well. We now have lost a chopper. And the reason why I said I don't want to lose a chopper is because of how many glints are going to be looking at us in these compounds that are going to try to gatekeep us. Unfortunately for Telly on 12 kill, he goes down right now. It's up to Mr. M and Wapner to get the clutch. Mr. M struggling. It looks like he's about to get splatted. He survives barely. Any day now, Activision. And here we are in a solo situation. Now another spot where his ADS sensitivity is crazy high. Oh, get out of the gas. Let's go, guy. You're... Oh my God. He's self-res, self-res. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right in front of you too, maybe. Now I'm gonna be honest. I'm very surprised to survive that fight. Very surprised to survive that fight. All right, this here. Now, mm, I wasn't a huge fan of them going to the train, to be honest. Um, I would have liked for him to drop us off and allow us to fight the enemies on the train while he flew around and then maybe pick us up and get us the hell out of there. I knew their plan was to scrap the uh, helicopter, and I didn't like that because of the gatekeeping position in the buildings that were across the ravine. Granted, they're not the ones that killed us, but they probably would have. And also, it just put us in a bad position. Not only did we fight the enemy team on the train, but again, the guys across the ravine in the buildings, and also the team that was further to the east hand side of the map um, that was out in the open that we actually ended up getting two of the kills on. So we put ourselves in a bad position, throwing ourselves into the middle of a of a 1v3 team fight, and it ended up costing two of our teammates lives. So it was very unfortunate to see. It is what it is. And again, this is the reason why I didn't want to lose a chopper because when we need to rotate in, it's going to be very, very hard for us to do. We got to cross this open ass ravine. And since they have a beautiful angle on it, if, as long as they get the shots, we're, we're dead. And again, playing like this, even if it works out at the end of the day, you're just, you're just testing luck. That's all it is. Your luck of where the players are positioned, luck being what type of aim the enemies have, what type of accuracy they have, what type of weapons they have. Because in normal gatekeeping position, these guys right here, they should have killed us a hundred times over. But for some reason, they didn't. But here we are again, spectating Wapner rocking six kills. And notice how he had five kills literally in the first two minutes of the game. And now we are 15 minutes in the match and he's only got one extra kill. Like I said, he could be on a 10 kill plus game right now if he would just stop making the same basic mistakes that we talk about day in and day out. We have enemies. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Committed, bro. Committed. All right. So, <laughs> look, I get it. Wapner, he's not the team carry. He really just wanted to thug it out and risk it all to get his carry back. So, here we should be spectating. Not Mr. M, but the other dude, Fratelli. All right. So, here we are spectating Fratelli right here. And he's going to go ahead and go for the scav now. <laughs> There's no perfect tactic for this, right? It's going to be it's gonna be a clusterfuck. That's all there is to it. You have to get money to get your teammates back. At the same time, you need to get your loadout. So in this position, get your squad mates back and pray to God you get your you get your free loadout relatively soon. You did just float back down. People just see you parachute. So if I was a team here, I would be collapsing on you instantly. So we just need to find a basic gun we can get some kills with. And that's it. So I pick up these scavs. I definitely would drop that LMG for that SMG. Not the best SMG in the world, but it's definitely better than that LMG. Right, fortunately, the scavs are extremely close together in our us. Come on, baby. Come on. You don't need it. You don't need that, fam. You know what you need? Your scavs. I 
I can respect the plate. He's making me nervous, though. A little bit of haste. Let's go. All right, so we got a teammate back, and of course, we're going to be waiting. Oh, my God. They are pushing hard. Unfortunately, I don't know if we're going to be able to survive this. We have no idea how many enemies there are. Decent movement. Unfortunately, the enemy had, had dead silence. And it is what it is. That's You hate to see that. You hate to see that. And again, like I said when he was landing in, there's really no perfect play to this. Um, you're going to salt mines, a.k.a. quarry. And it's going to be a dangerous fight no matter what. And these guys are clearly sweats. And it is what it is. Yo, you got to give a little props for that. I was, I was, I was kind of nice. I thought he was about to pull it off. I thought he was about to pull it off. Not really sure why he bought back Wabner and not Fratelli. I'm going to be honest. Wabner isn't Fratelli. Fratelli is definitely the better player on the team. That's who I would have bought back. And now we're going for the supply run. And this is a problem a lot of players have. We just... When we die and you're by yourself, everyone gets super focused on getting your teammates back. And unfortunately, we don't always make the best decisions. Going to Salt Mine in the first place was probably not the greatest of the decisions. Um, I respect it because of the scav. But again, at the same time, it, it's such a hot area to go to. You're having a lot of risk versus reward. Look at this guy. All right, so now we got to go to the scab that's going to be on the outside and there's going to be a team camping this building. All right, a whole squad firing out of Bertha. This thing may not survive. There it is. Now is no, it's no longer usable. And unfortunately, it looks like Wabner is going to go down. I don't know why he decided to go backwards around the vehicle. He should have just went forward when he jumped out and vaulted over this little wall right in front of us. But for some reason, he didn't. Not really sure why. Once again, that was that's kind of a questionable play. I'm going to be honest. But here we are moving on to the next squad. I'm sorry. This wasn't a trios game. This is a squad gameplay. Um, we're spectating Galvez, Montoya, War, and Elenis. Let's see what they're rocking with. And look at this, guys. Look at this. So we go from spectating Fratelli, who is actually a pretty decent player, um, as, as well as Mr. M. Mr. M in that, that last play before he died was kind of impressive if he would have pulled it off. The spectating a squad that's literally just sitting on top of buildings, playing the edge, and they're able to get the kill on the squad that's actually better than them. And why was that? Because they worked together. Regardless of the fact they were camping on top of building, they did work together. They took out the Bertha, and they were able to get the kill and solidify that team fight. But here we are now, spectating these guys who are going to be focusing on position. I like this. So they have a bounty that's in quarry, or salt mine, I'm sorry. Um, so instead of pushing the bounty and getting in a bad spot, they're already predicting the circle is going to rotate to the north, which I do like. Circle may not go north, and even, and even if it doesn't, you can just go right down extremely easily. Problem is, if you go hunt down this bounty right here, and you kill them, and then you fight and kill everybody else in here, let's assume you kill every person in Salt Mine, then what happens when the circle rotates north? Whatever team's up here is just going to shoot you when you try to rotate. This is another reason why I always say try to focus on rotations. Oh, God. Here we, here we go. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, we... we, we we had some hope. This looked like this would be a very aggressive gameplay. Fight, 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 fight. And the next thing you know, here we have this squad here. It's just going to be camping in bushes. Now, look, it may be six. We don't know. But at the end of the day, this is not what you're supposed to do. I like the fact that we came up here for positioning, but we really need to start worrying about positioning. Not to mention, look at this guy. We can go take him out real easy. For some reason, we're just holding this spot. I don't like this. This isn't a bad spot, but... I would rather be in this area around here. That way, one, I can get a little bit more aggressive, get some kills and other people rotating, catch them out. Two, again, catch people coming out of salt mine. But instead, we're all hiding in bushes, crouched. And because of that, we have two kills, three kills, uh, I believe four and zero, if my numbers are correctly. And we're just watching a fight go on. And instead of actually pushing the fight and trying to close the gap and get those kills, what are we actually doing? We're just watching them. I'm glad he's not wasting his cluster strike because we're going to need that. Now, we, we keep pinging the enemies, which is cool. But look where the circle went. Weird. So now, 
this circle is our zone, but where's the next one going to be at? It's not going to favor this. The circle is going to probably going to go around this area and we're going to have to rotate. So if we would have closed the gap and pushed the squad when they were fighting, we could already be set up in a good position. But now what's going to happen is the longer we stay at these guys, if anyone on our team has a sniper, the longer we stay at these guys, they're going to end up seeing us and they're going to keep the shit out of us. So again, guys, I want y'all to slow your gameplay down at the end game. But don't do this shit. Oh, uh, here we have uh, Galvez actually sniping at the enemies. Go ahead and piss them off. Say, hey, bros, we're here. Please shoot me. And at the same time, we're getting third party from a team pushing our West 285. And again, this is this is why I don't like this spot. Another reason is the fact that because of the elevation, you can still get pushed from every single direction. All right. Enemy goes, teammate goes down. And then the other squad that we were sniping at decided, you know what? We're going to go ahead and push you assholes. And that's exactly what happened. So we end up getting third partied. Again, this whole situation could have been avoided if we just would have pushed the hill. Third party that team. Oh my God. And here, and dude, despite, despite our teammates dying, this was our backup. Ellen is sitting in a bush right now. Level 290, mind you. Sitting in a bush. Waiting patiently for the gazelle to come out and reveal itself so it can pounce on it like a lion. Look at the patience from young Ellenus right now. The laser beam focus. Let's go spectate war real quick. Oh my god, Ellenus is getting shot through the bush. How? How is it possible that they can see you in a bush? Because it is! Bush camping is stupid! Stop it! You look dumb! You do I'm sorry! I I'm, I'm, I'm no! Alright, guys, look. Look. You guys have got to stop. You guys have got to stop hiding bushes. Never hide in bushes, ever. The only times I can ever forgive someone from being in a bush is if you have no cover around you, you need a little bit of concealment to plate up, and then once you're plated, you can leave. I get that. But when you're getting shot at by an enemy, and you're not broken, and you're just sitting there behind a bush expecting the bush to block the bullets, what are you doing? You can shoot through leaves, my guy. You can shoot right through that shit. It makes no damn sense. And the fact that we saw so many bush campers at the end, and look, I'm not ranting because I hate getting killed by bush campers. I never get killed by bush campers, ever. They're very easy to kill. It's just annoying to watch. Because again, going back to the original strategy, if you guys rotate up on that hill and left your bushes, they could have survived that entire fight and possibly gotten the key position to win the game because they played scared and they succumbed to that fear and they stayed in bushes and didn't want to move. Their fear cost them the game. So, so those of you guys who just think I'm out here hating on people camping, I'm not I'm telling you guys, stop it so you can become a better player. There are times and there are places where sitting in the same spot will help you. Talking about positioning shit, but when you're in a bad spot, there's never a time to camp in a bad spot. That's where reading the map comes into play. You guys have got to start looking at the map, start judging elevation and terrain and start coming up with a plan, dude. They had no plan at all. And I know they, and I knew they didn't based on how long they were sitting there. I'm going to say this one more time. Um, cover versus concealment, right? This is something I learned back a long time ago in my life when I had a different job than what I do now. Um, cover, uh, yeah, cover is what can protect you. When you get shot at, cover is what will block the bullets. Concealment is what hides you, but what's hiding you can be penetrated by oncoming fire, AKA will kill you. All right, so now we are by ourselves with war with five kills. He is the team carry, unfortunately, and he isn't again in a bad position. Now, now look, guys, look, I don't want to sit here and just troll these guys. But the problem is this entire fight could have been avoided again if we would have pushed across. Oh, my God. Did Ellen just splat and break his ankles? Oh, no, he didn't. He got shot. Okay, 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 okay. He probably got shot because he was Mary Poppins floating in, right? Remember, guys, pull your parachute at the last second. Don't float down for everyone to see you. That's, again, no. Not really sure what we're doing. I would rather have rotated on the high ground, got an elevation, and shot down on the enemies because right now we're looking at a 1v4v4. We need two third-party teams and, let, and allow them to kill each other off. But if we're going to be on the low ground, we're going to be exposed. Look at this Look at this terrain right here. We're not going to have much cover. The enemies that are up top are always going to have an angle on us. Oh, no. What are you doing? What, 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 what are you doing? Well, I get it. You want to suppress the enemy of the cluster. That's what, all, that's what Savage always tells you. But don't, don't just sit out there whipping it back and forth, my dude. You're not Willow Smith. Calm down. Another bush camper thinking he can be protected. But you can't. Cover versus concealment, my guy. 
All right, and it looks like the squad that got the high ground that I've been begging every team we spectated to grab looks like they're gonna, go, they're gonna win, and they do. Oh, weird, right? Absolutely weird. Who would have guessed that? Not me. No, no, because I'm trash and I'm washed up. But look, guys, again, the purpose of this video isn't to make fun of players. It's just to hopefully force you guys out of this. Come on, man. Y'all need some voice in the back of your head telling you to stop doing this stupid shit. It's not. No. Again, even if you have a bad aim, even if you don't, even if you have bad movement, there's no excuse to ever do the shit we just saw happen. The first squad we spectated, they were actually pretty decent. They were probably the best squad in this entire game. But then the next two squads, they just, they for some reason thought bushes were the way. Guess what? It's not the way. It's not. But guys, again, I want you to take this information and either just A, enjoy it, whether you play Warzone or not, or B, take it to Verdansk and stop making these damn mistakes. Also, when the next BR comes out, you can use this tactics there too. But anyway, until next time, you have a good one. Stop doing this shit. And good luck in Warzone.